what's your thoughts on today's um, condition of men? We've got the condition of the military. What's today's condition of men in father? Because you, de- you deal with men on a, on a daily basis, yeah, think, basis with, with a mighty men. I ministry. think it's, and it's the most important thing in my life. And I, everything that I am today is because I had great fathers in my life. Every, so, so much is shaped by fatherhood. Everything that I think is wrong in the country today goes back to fatherhood. Wow. Right? Families are led by fathers. Right. Yes. And if you change the families in this country, yeah. you would change this country. Wherever you see an issue, like, and talk to people that you know have like issues mm-hmm. and ask them about their father. Right. So many people have issues rooted in fatherhood issues. But all this ideology that's wrong, it all stems back to weak fathers, men not leading their homes. And that's men not leading their marriages. Right. I think this is really, it, men carry a different weight, um, like a different responsibility. And this is a, a, in Ephesians 5. People don't like this scripture either, Matt. So I, liked, I like all the ones that people don't like. <laughs> well, the scripture that a lot of men do like is in Ephesians 5 where it says, a woman should submit to her husband. Okay, there you and, go. And guys will throw that one all around. Okay. Hey, you, hey, you got to submit to me. You got to do what I say. Um, but but it, it says something a little bit different for the men right after that. Right after that, right? Right after that. So women submit to your husbands, right? Because they're, they're the leaders of your family. But you know what it says about the men? It says men yeah. should serve and love their wives the way Christ loved the church. Mm. That is so much more of a challenge. Mm. Why is that? The way that Christ loved the church, here's how Christ loved the church. If you understand the whole story of God working with people on the earth, it's this desire to have a relationship with us. What can I do? Okay, I'm going to give you leaders. I'm going to give you judges. I'm going to make miracles. I'm going to do everything I can for this to work. Okay, yeah. it's not working. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send my son yeah. to die for you, that I'm willing to pay whatever the price is that this relationship between us can mm. work. And it says that's how men should love their wives. Women just have to submit to their husbands. Your, your husband can be a knucklehead. Just submit to him. Right, and that's a very difficult thing to do if your husband's very a, difficult. If your husband's can, a knucklehead, can, uh, but Jordan, for, can we look at this? This scripture, we'll look at it on the screen. It says uh, uh, Ephesians five twenty two says, "Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do the Lord." And that's where it, that's where it is. The next scripture is twenty three. Woo, that's a that's a profound statement. For the husband is a head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now go, the church, go, Mr. go Christ. down to go down to twenty five. So husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her body by washing with water through the world and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. So this is what's called of men, right? That you'd be willing to sacrifice, that you'd be willing to do whatever it takes, Matt, even if your wife's not submitting to you, right? Because this is how Christ loved the church. Christ died for even the people who didn't want to listen, even the people who are disobedient. He's, met, he's, doing, he's saying, I will do whatever it takes for this to work. You just have to choose me back. This is how men have to lead their marriages. But Pastor right? Garrett, she's not listening to me. I hear it all the time. She doesn't... She's not all, I, attention. I hear it she so, let me get through. I, I can go out to dinner with a couple, and I can tell how a man is at home. Because guys are, you know, they're all tough outside the home. They're all tough at men's ministry. But then we go have dinner and I can see that your wife doesn't respect you. (laughs) Why does your wife not respect you? Because you don't lead yourself, right? If you would lead yourself, if you would do what you're supposed to be doing, your wife would humbly submit to you. And if you're hearing this and you're saying, not my wife, you're a bad leader. You should look at you should look at your relationship. One, by the way, if you're married, you made a covenant before God. You need to do everything you can do to honor that, right? But as a man, even if you're saying, "Well, well, my wife won't submit yeah. to me," you have to say, "I'm going to do whatever it takes for this to work." You have to walk away. I'll never walk away. I'll I'll make whatever sacrifice I have to make for this to work, mm-hmm. right? That's super difficult. That's not that's not fair. It's certainly not fair at all. It doesn't call the women to sacrifice. And so this all comes back to male leadership. And this is the way men have to lead their families. This is the way men have to lead their marriages. And that's what will change things in this country is when men say, and this is, this is what's happened for generations and generations up until this strange time that we live in now where we're trying to get women into a role to go and sacrifice themselves for the nation, right? It is, a, it is the role of a man to pay that ultimate price. And you should live every area of your life that way. Because being a father and being a husband, it's not about you. Patrick and I were just having a conversation of different religions. You got your, your Jewish, your Muslim, and your your uh, your Christians, right? So the population of faiths in the world, the largest population of faith right now is is Christian. Mm-hmm. But in the next 15, 20 years, do you know what the biggest religion will be based on population? It's going to be Muslim. Mm-hmm. Reason being, there's more Muslim families having more. Yep, kids. they have lots of children and lots of kids. 
So there's something the, the Jewish people have very much figured out about family as well. Some of the oldest, and I, and I know you uh, have an education and learn about this stuff and, and what you do in business. Jewish, uh, the, the oldest living trusts in the world are in Jewish families. Or there's some trusts that are over 400 years old. Right, older than this nation. Yeah. I trust older yeah. than this nation. Those people live here in the U.S. As generational wealth. Right. People. How is that possible? Right. Because if you understand trust law and you understand perpetuity law and all kinds of things in this country, laws change too often to write a contract that'll last that long. The only way that those families have been able to keep a family trust going for over 400 years is because they passed down a way of thinking with the contracts. They passed down a way of thinking. Here's how people have learned for a long time: follow your father. Go do what he does. Learn from him. Right. For most of the world, that's how it's worked. And just shut up and listen to your father till you're about 25, and then he'll give you some of your own land, give you some of his own things to work. What do we do today? At 18, year, 18 years yeah. old, go off to some random university, yeah. hang out with a bunch of other 18-year-olds that also don't know anything, yeah. and you guys try to all figure it out. And then four years later, you're going to be prepared to lead yourself, to lead a family, to lead a business? Absolutely not. And so, that's, By the way, that's why I respect about the, most, the uh, Mormons. Right out here with the place we just got coffee. There's a guy, a bunch of guys that are in you know, short white sleeve shirts and mm-hmm. black tie. Right? Yeah. They're doing their ministry. They're 17, 18 years old. They just graduated high school. And I asked, hey, are you on your mission? Yeah. And by the way, these guys, a lot of them have to fund their own mission. Right. They have to pay for their own way to serve their faith for a period of two years before going to college. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.